Good morning, dear students. Welcome back to this virtual classroom. And this class will be the 11th class and we'll be switching over to a new topic. And this topic is function overloading. This chapter is after classes and objects. So we are in the next chapter, the new chapter. You know, polymorphism. Polymorphism is the message being processed in more than one form. Message being processed in more than one form. That is poly means many, morphism, change, or processing in a changed manner. In functional loading, if you see, C++ implements a polymorphism through functional loading and operator overloading. Likewise, the function overloading allows the user to create new abstract data types. If you check the concept of function overloading, more than one function, try understanding this, there is a class, let us imagine there is a class and we have member functions. There are more than one member function. All these member functions will be having the same name but differs in the number of arguments, number and type of arguments. This is the concept of function overloading. I would like to repeat. The concept is, let us take a class. It has got more than one member function. All these member functions will be having the same name, but differs in the number of arguments or the type of arguments also we, we can call. Then, how does the compiler understands to execute it? More than one function having same name, there is a confusion. Because normally we never had such kind of a concept before. Every member function will be having different names like get data, process, display, different names. But here in function overloading, the, there are more than one function having same name. Then there is a task for the compiler to understand how to execute. So here, what it does, in the function call statement, function is there, function call statement, the function call statement matches with the number of arguments in the function, member function. So the both arguments should match only then the compiler could execute that particular appropriate function. We will be taking up an example that is more than one function having the same name. The execution pattern happens by the comp compiler matching the function call statement, its arguments with the member function and the arguments. That is the actual argument being compared with the formal arguments. This is how the execution happens. Let us go for an example. Let us take an example. This example will be about finding the area. Finding the area of a square, rectangle and triangle. You know that as to find the square, we need one input. For example, 5. So what do you do with the square? 5 into 5 that becomes 25. Likewise, when I go to find the area of a rectangle, I need two inputs, 5 comma 2, 5 into 2, 10. When we take for triangle, area of a triangle, three inputs we need, A, B, C. So, when we work on this, you need to understand that we will be finding the area, area of a square, area of a rectangle, area of a triangle. In this context, all the member functions will be having the same name. What is that? Area. Now, I have taken a class here, fun overload, that is function overload. And I am going to take some of the data members, both in integer category as well as float. Int Q, comma R. Q I have taken for square to find the area of a square. R I have taken for rectangle 
that is the area of a rectangle. Then I take float data members. This float I need for triangle. That is, I say, yes, first I find the semi perimeter given the three sides. Then T I take to find the area of a triangle. Try understanding? Q is used to find the area of a square to store the answer, to store the resultant value. Likewise, rectangle R I have taken to find the area of a rectangle. Float. In this float, S and T will be used while finding the area of a triangle. Now, public, then I take void area, void area, then I take an argument, I take an argument, int A, void area int A, a single argument, obviously a single argument would be for square, then I take Q equals A into A, kindly check properly, area of a square, the name of the member function is area, the same name will be given for rectangle as well as triangle, Q equals A into A. Here itself, I would like to place the output. So what I say here as C out the area of a square, I'll write in the next line, equals, equals, close the double quotes, the value, the resulting value will be in Q, so I take as Q and I say end in. I close the function bracket, I move on to the next one, that is to find the area of a rectangle. So void, I have not closed the class here, so void area int a comma int b. Two arguments we want to find the area of a rectangle. So I take here r equals because in the private the data member is r, we use r equals a into b. Likewise, I am going to place the output as the area of a, I will write in the next line, rectangle equals R. Then I say end L. I close the flower bracket. Area, area. Hope you are understanding. Function overloading. Now, there is an overloading of function, area, void. Again, I take this for to find the area of a triangle. So I say area int A comma int B comma int C. So three sides we have in a triangle. And then I need to find the semi-perimeter. So I have taken here S for semi-perimeter. S equals A plus B plus C divided by 2. I take as 2.0 since there is a division. Next, we need to find the area of a triangle after finding the semi-perimeter. By using semi-perimeter, we are going to find the area of a triangle. To find the area of a triangle, T equals, I take square root. You know the header file, I need to use that. I have not written, I need to rewrite it again. So the math.h header file, I will be using it for square root function. Square root of S into S minus A, then into S minus B, into S minus C. This will be the formula of finding the area of a triangle given the three sides, that is by using, by using the semi-perimeter. I close the bracket, then I close the, consider this as the closing bracket for the class. Here we have opened and here I have closed and this bracket will be the closing bracket for this member function, the third member function area. 
if you see all the three member functions are having the same name area but there is a difference the difference is int a one argument two argument three argument square has got only one value to be as a to be taken as an input rectangle needs two input triangle needs three input the compiler one, during its time of compilation it identifies which needs to be executed according to the number of arguments passed in the function call statement i need to write the function call statement there so i'll be writing the main function void main open a flower bracket fun overload because i would like to create the object declare the object fun overload i'll take obj normally we take capital f so i take obj obj will be the object now for us then i use the object to access the members area all the three member functions are with the same name so obj dot area obj dot area i am taking a single argument that is 5 i'll take one more obj dot area i'll take two arguments 2 comma 3 one more accessing the area with three arguments 5 comma 2 comma 1 for our understanding we need to go for one more that is obj area i'll take 2 if you look at these accessing points obj dot area has got one argument now the control goes and selects the member function which has got only one argument that is 5 is the value what we have as an actual argument then it goes and compares with any of the member function which is having only one argument hence int a that is that 5 is copied on to a or a gets the copy of 5 as being a single argument then this member function executes a into a that is the value of a here is what 5 then 5 into 5 that is 25 q will be storing 25 q will be the one which will be storing the area of a square there itself i am printing the area of a square equals q next the control comes back here area 2 comma 3 obj dot area 2 comma 3 where there are two arguments the compiler goes and matches with two arguments which has got two arguments here two arguments are here that is a and b two will be taken to a and three will be taken to b likewise a into b 2 into 3 then this part that is three argument are here three arguments are here 5 comma 2 comma 1 likewise this goes on if you take up with two here again a single argument a single argument will be matched with what obviously with square because it has got a single argument here so actual argument will be two and the formal argument here is also one that is a single argument in both places hence at the fourth call square will be executed 2 into 2 and then it is 4 area of a square will be 4 the calculation part we can understand at the later stage but the concept you need to understand is function overloading will be something like more than one function more than one function having same name area 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 this this is our example but differs in the number of arguments the arguments will be a single argument and a double argument and three arguments are there so a function should be having a difference a difference of with the type and arguments suppose i have 
the fourth member function even that is to find the area of a rectangle for example obj dot area of 2 comma 5.2 if you see here there is an integer and a float accordingly we need one more member function to find the rectangle but here two integer arguments are there may not match hence we may need one more member function to match that so the type of argument the order of argument also matters here if two integers are there and there is a call with two arguments that is obj dot area 2 comma 3 as well as obj dot area 2 comma 5.2 there are two arguments here to match hence int and int goes to match the int and int types here int and float there needs to be one more member function like int and could be float the other member function hence the type also matches with this number of arguments that is the order and the number of arguments the order of type as well as the number of arguments kindly go through this and try understanding the concept of functional loading next we will be discussing on the need of functional loading in this need for function overloading we need to understand there are four points are there and this will be asked for, asked in the exam for three mark or five mark in the need what is the need for us to use function overloading when different functions are created for different operations then there needs to be a call that is to call to a respective function depending on the situation so different functions will be having different operations but here different functions having same name different functions used with operations for same name this is the first point the second point will be it is easier to understand it is easier to understand the flow of information and to debug also the third point will be code maintenance is easy code maintenance will be easy likewise the fourth point will be easier interface easier interface between programs and real world object so these are the four different points i would like to write on the board please take down these are the points we have for need in using function overloading or need for using function overloading so when different functions are created for different operations you know that different functions will be created get data for input and process for a processing part and as well as display for the output likewise different functions are created for different operations they their user has to call respective function depending on the situation what situation it is we need to call accordingly but here if you see for different situations if same function that is same function name so we we saw that different situations were there square rectangle that is to find the area of a square area of a rectangle area of a triangle different situations but we used the same function how do we say same function we say as when functions having same name so if same function then with different arguments same functions with different arguments then we use what function overloading likewise the second point will be it is easier to understand the flow of information we know which place the compiler is taking according to the matching of the argument hence flow of information as well as debugging removing the errors also becomes easy code maintenance also easy because we are writing under one single name easier interface between programs and real world object programs written based on the oops concept in that the interfacing between the program and the real world object will be easier these are the points due to these points there is a need for function overloading next we move on to inline function when you look at inline function the reason why we take inline function is this inline functions are short function it's not a complex oriented function this inline function replaces 
a function call with the body of the function. So you know what is a calling called? Calling function will be having the function call statement from where the control moves on to the called function. In inline function, if you take the reason why we take inline function is a function call generally involves the complex process, a complex process of invoking a function that is passing arguments or passing parameters to a function. It's a complex process, in fact. Likewise, the other processes, other overheaders, that is storage, allocating the storage for the local variables. Two things are there. One is passing the arguments as well as allocating. This takes extra time, extra time in passing as well as extra time in allocating. This will be avoided in inline function. So, in inline function, what it does is, when I take an example, here function 1, function 1, open a flower bracket, I am making a function call here to function 2. That is, let us take this as the function call statement. From function call statement, the control is moving on to function 2, function 2. So from function 1, this is the calling function, this is the called function, function call is made. In inline function, what happens? The whole coding is getting replaced, that is function call statement is replaced with the whole coding here. This is how the inline function works, but inline function will be a short function and it will be recognized as a short function and before any other function first the inline function should be declared or inline function should be defined the points to be noted the points to be noted while we work with inline function is inline function definition starts with the keyword inline likewise the inline function should be defined before all functions that call it the compiler replaces the function call statement as I said compiler replaces the function call statement with a function code itself that is called as the expansion you need to understand so we expand this code one line will be replaced with this there will be a limited allocation of storage here so memory allocation is done but we will be using limited storage than the previous method from calling to the normal way of calling to call. The fourth point could be they run little faster, faster than the normal function. So you need to understand that inline function executes faster because then and there itself since there is a replacement of code the control comes executes there itself but this replacement is done by the compiler. So hope you understood what is an inline function. I repeat inline function is a short function the compiler replaces the function call statement with the body of the function so this will be the inline function here I've taken an example for inline function preprocessor directives inline as I said before any function we write the inline function then inline keyword is used before writing that particular function so inline so cube will be in line, in line int cube, there is a single argument. We are finding the cube here, a into a into a. In the void main, int x comma y, CLR is CR. Let us take a value, let us take a value as enter a number, a single number we are going to enter, then scene is going to take, we are going to use x here x will be the variable which is going to take the value then c in x y equals cube of x this is the function call statement this function call statement will be replaced by the function code so the function code gets replaced hence when the control is entering as well as executing here itself this code gets executed this is taken care by the compiler but you should have mentioned this function belongs to the concept of inline. This cube is of inline only then this cube will be replaced with this 
function code and then the output will be the cube of x or I would like to place the value there the cube of x the value will be printed over here equals equals then I take that y y y's value will be printed here. So, double quotes double quotes then I say git ch close the program. So, this will be an example for us while explaining or discussing about inline function. So, students make sure that two topics we discussed function overloading as well as inline function from the chapter of function overloading. So, next class we will be meeting and that will be the final class on function overloading. Kindly go through the example whatever I had written. Thank you.